Hey guys, welcome back to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we're going to be watching the 1983 Taiwanese film That Day on the Beach. This is a film by director Edward Yang. It stars Sylvia Chang, Tzu Ming, and actually features another Taiwanese director, Hu Xiaoxian, in how large a role, I'm not really sure. The movie's written by Edward Yang and uh, Wu Nianjian, and is often cited as one of the first if not the first movie in the Taiwanese New Wave. The film is also shot by Christopher Doyle, who you may know from his collaborations with Wong Kar Wai. Sounds like a good pedigree. Uh, I've been wanting to get into some Edward Yang, some Taiwanese New Wave on this channel for a while now, um, expand the market of East Asian cinema beyond the grasp of just Japanese films. So yeah, I figured this might be a good place to start. And before we begin, don't forget to click the like button. And before we begin, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. Ah, my headphones aren't coming off of there. There we go. I don't even have my comfy slippers on. What the hell? I'm just not prepared at all today. Believe it or not, I've never seen a full Edward Yang film. If anything, just parts of it. Maybe in my childhood, around the house, or visiting Taiwan. So I'm excited. Me having never seen an Edward Yang film before, a recurring motif in Edward Yang <laughs> films, the uh, the presence of music, especially on the radio. It's always such an interesting experience listening to uh, movies on headphones because they're not intended for headphones, but you can actually hear when different audio tracks are being like s streamed in and being taken out. Not necessarily a experience I would recommend, but if you are used to like, or if you have some passing experience with like audio production, it's something that you'll pick up if you watch head if you watch movies in this format. The perpetual question of if you're actually going to show their face, if they can actually play the instrument. I just watched another, um, like, classical musician movie recently, also from East Asia, but I just watched Tokyo Sonata recently, which is a beautiful movie, Kiyoshi Kurosawa, if you've never seen it before. Check it out. This is for dich. This is for dich. And the tenor of the music changes when she reads the note. Nice little touch. And another movie with sports. Don't get to. I, I rarely get to do that. This and uh, what we do, what we look at when we, what we see when we look at the sky. This is also featured in a Wong Kar Wai film. Which one? Happy Together? Or maybe that's just because it's Waltz. That's a beautiful image. He's got to open up his hips a little. <laughs> and I like the kind of repeated motif or uh, stylistic element of go coming in and out of scenes using music. I know that's kind of um, par for the course for many movies, but because this movie has such a kind of overarching musical theme to it. It makes sense. Oh. 
Okay, so I guess they're in Japan now. Mm. Uh, I guess they're Japanese in origin. Dann ist es ein Pianist, der während des Konzertes Schwierigkeiten hat, sich zu konzentrieren. Who's the cam up for this? You can like kind of see it shaking. Maybe Chris, I mean, I think Chris Doyle usually does the actual cam ops for most of the shoots that he's on, right? Or at least earlier in his career. But if that's the case, you can like <laughs> feel him bursting at the seams, ready to uh, like pounce. Open up the open up the cinematography a little bit more. I also like their oppositional costuming. She's wearing the white, but she also has the black underneath. <laughs> Tell her what? Tell her what? Yeah, I like the um the prelapse post lapse they're doing with the uh, sound bites, the way you cut in and cut out of scenes. God, he looks just like my dad from that time. Chang So the last story been set for them. Jashen uh, is going to be arranged to be married to Dr. Chen's daughter, and uh, Jasha might be arranged to to marry Tetsuo, his son. And you kind of understand from the father's perspective that he kind of wants to keep it within like the Japanese tradition or heritage lineage. Nice shot to have them enter into the frame like that. Kind of eases you into this different setting. It's a good kind of editing decision. <laughs> There's Chris Doyle. <laughs> I'll be interested to see how much they kind of reuse this visual idea of having kind of the characters dominated in frame by houses or architecture or just other elements in shot. And this is also a cool idea of coming in. Um, after the point of in, um, in point of interest or the kind of action of a scene, and seeing only the fallout of it, 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 it kind of is in keeping with a family of kind of Japanese values that nothing is ever spoken of out loud. That um, you, you you're meant to just like understand the implications of scenes, which we established earlier with the way that. Um, uh, Jia Shen's uh, father greeted um, 
greeted Tan when first meeting her. Okay, so Justin was arranged to be married, and that's what kind of broke off her relationship. Was that the same instance that was shown or er, er, earlier in this movie? They're doing a lot of kind of uh, scenes within scenes, um, like flashbacks within flashbacks or flashbacks to different periods, out of different time periods, very effortlessly. It's really fun to have all of this kind of like nested within just this sequence of these two having tea together. It's a lot, a lot of uh, story being integrated into a, a very small scene. It, it kind of like shows Edward Yang's like priorities, I guess. He's like kind of uninterested in. Uh, advancing the plot or anything or even creating like a a framing with an interesting engine he's just interested in kind of uh, tracing back memories and going back and ruminating and contemplating using the present as just a reflection of the past So, like, something I, I just want to briefly say as just a point of comparison, not necessarily to say uh, that either is better or worse, just pointing out the differences and perhaps my preferences. Uh, so this kind of structure where the characters are constantly kind of thinking back to their past and seeing how it kind of informs their decisions in the present, uh, I guess a good example of, like, a Hollywoodish. Maybe not quite so totally Hollywood, but uh, a Hollywood version of this presentation would be something like uh, Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog Millionaire uses the artifice of a of a game show, of a challenge that kind of elicits all of these memories, and it's an interesting framing. Um, but I think it also tips its hand into the Hollywood need for something that's big and bombastic and show-offy like if you're gonna have a character go through memories it has to be something that involves a lot of stakes and he's gonna win a million dollars or uh, a billion rupees i forget how much it actually was in the movie 330 million rupees i forget but that that there needs to be some sort of justification if you want to uh, go back in time and trace the past of these characters' lives and see how it informs their decisions in the present. And I understand that for a Hollywood, uh, within the framework of a Hollywood movie, I don't think all of that is absolutely necessary. I actually think Slumdog, I personally think of Slumdog Millionaire as a really instructive example of a movie that has the um, perfect aims for me as for what a movie can represent or what a movie can be but the most inelegant <laughs> the most inelegant and manufactured means of achieving it i really like a movie that takes the opportunity to explore a character's past and how they arrive at their um at their thoughts and their values and their kind of moral systems and i like movies that explore things in in a casual ruminative way and i think that day on the beach kind of illustrates this in the most excessive form 
maybe not the most most excessive form, but a, in a form that's kind of anti that's anti conflict or anti um, high stakes in the way that a traditional Hollywood narrative would try and construct. And so I, I while this is all, I would say this kind of form is my uh, preference. I also do see its shortcomings and how it would be less interesting and less appealing to a general audience. Like we've basically had two scenes in the present so far, waiting, uh, listening to a record, uh, listening to an interview she gives on the radio and then going to dinner or going to tea with her childhood friend and everything else is like backstory or in the past. But I also want to highlight the use of music that may be used in, um, in, in Jolly's past, in her meeting her boyfriend or her future husband or whatever, that it, it is pointing to a difference in how music lives in the lives of these characters or what function music serves to these two characters, that in um, Wei Ching's uh, life, music, classical music, served a means as an escape or a solace it, when she was a, unable to marry Jia Shan. Jia Chen, and uh, for Jia Li, it's a point of exuberance. It's actually how she gets to meet and uh, get closer and bond and ultimately consummate with her future husband. And so you can kind of see these two polar, these two polarities of how music is pre presented almost as a... Um, a, pris a prison in one on one side and as a liberator on the other this is exactly how my dad dressed during these these times maybe not in the 80s i haven't actually seen that many pictures of him in the 80s but definitely in the early 90s maybe in the 70s it's been 13 years present day is uh 13 years in the future this is my place. <laughs> and we're also seeing two different versions of uh, Taiwanese culture intersecting with two um, different cultures or nationalities. It's intersection with uh, Japanese culture as represented by the Jiao family and uh, its intersection with Western culture with the uh, with the rock music specific specifically American culture I'll say oh that looks hot oh wow Taiwan is hot flirting with the teacher I love this done in the silhouette. <笑>你没有干涉你吗把这做的比较技巧一点我也像其他人一样没有什么目的的去考留考申请学校去考托福 They managed to find the most glory baby Man,
Ah, uh, here we go again. Look at all the happy families this this father has match made. Tom Bia Yiho Hitchao. 很多人都说我成熟了，不太去想将来，也不不会去期望些什么。He looks depressed as hell saying that。只希望说在日常生活当中能够得到一些小的满足，就像是当年球队朋友写来的信啊，嗯，或者是听到一首好听的音乐。how thing did he mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. The connection of music in all their lives is kind of a um. As a bomb. Tell me something. I just want to ask you. Are you happy? They made it. They've done good work. However, they've done it. Happiness is what. Of um. Gracefully aging these actors through the various period time periods this movie is depicting, like especially in costuming and hair decisions, making very distinct choices, uh, depictions of them in high school, post college, and as adults. She's gonna run away. We'll make a note of um, kind of framing them inside of frames. Insert the uh, the searcher shot. <laughs> I like these non-verbal scenes. These wordless scenes. It's really elegant. Oh, they're getting like a civil marriage. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's romantic. He was cheating on me. Oh. Yeah. <sighs> this is the wrong time to say it, but they've they've found a great way to make a distinct hairstyle for her for this age as well.
Yeah, so this is the first shot from the beginning of the movie. Okay, he's alive? Are we going back in time again? So this is going back in the past. I should have recognized from the hair. Yeah, they have to make a lot of hair and costume decisions based on what time period they're depicting. It's, it's more complicated than I thought it would be. I like his tight jeans. Beautiful. Beautiful. So rarely do I get to see movies, East Asian movies, depicting the ocean. I'm really liking the shots in this. Wow. Just like stunning to see the Taiwanese landscape depicted in this film. Mountain Gandalf. Mei 记得打电话给我。他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是他是
It's another beautiful shot. Just the distance between them. It really is like a Matryoshka doll. The way it lays in during like time periods in on itself. She's relaying this story to um, to Wei Jing about discovering her husband had drowned, and in that thought of think of seeing her husband drowned is thinking back to this time of discord within their marriage. This is the way that young people fight. This is not how old Asian couples fight. <laughs> Doyle finally managing to find the focus at the end of that shot. You can actually see him turning into my dad. Don't put it in his clothes, she's gonna find it. Yeah, it's not going well. They've got the continuity lined up pretty well in terms of the shots of him driving and how they line up with the uh, reverse on them in the car. <laughs> you see the bikes go through the red light. The policeman she was supposed to talk to, like 40 minutes ago in this movie. Oh, you like to hold. Jay Donsia, you don't have a bomb to it. Now, what? Take the summit, take me. Hey, my beard. Ah, Jay Donsia, put it down for that. What was out? What me about war? I don't know if this is doctor. Oh, a psychiatrist. Another good transition. I 
距离越来越远了。我只想提醒你一点，就是不要让这种工作范围以外的事影响到你的情绪，影响到你的工作。嗯，我老实的跟你讲。如果因为你表现的不理想而影响到公司的利益，什么是将来的幸福？这种日子你也叫幸福吗？你这个样子给我很大的阻力。你为什么老是 ？And again, this fight that they're having over whether or not they think this is like a happy life is also a conversation that she had with her brother. 德伟，你这种话听起来给我一种感觉，就是借口。我在讲什么？你在讲什么嘛？我在讲什么？你在讲什么？我只想靠着你好好的休息一下。我真的是好累好累。离开家一阵子吧，会好点的。我们公司以后，这 nice nightclub， 韩国、香港、新加坡的 ，to be playing， 我就全交给 ，to be playing Pink Floyd。I mean, I got a perm for that man. Yeah, there it is. How did you get it? You're a sick boy. 心血来潮，嗯，所以常听他讲他旅行的经历，欧洲了，南美、中东、印度、尼泊尔。别看我到处乱跑，其实我是蛮穷的。还是你一直想保持现在这么简单的生活呢？今天晚上去我那里，好不好？ And like that, she's gone. I kind of really don't like their apartment. It looks like the most uncomfortable place. Adosan, you don't see how it's done. This is not what I know. I'm here to help you. Ah, I'm. 对即马神奇的大病拢袂着啊！唉，家仔哦，无理由即马我大人叫起来做啊，也唔足辛苦的啦。啊，对不起，是程太太吗？我可以先来坐一下吗？请进。Potentially the lady he's been seeing. 我这里有一封应该是属于你的信。Oh no, what's going on? 这是德伟的字，是他写给你的信，可是里面的信是写给你的。不用拆了，里面的信一定是写给我的。其实我也很同情你的处境， oh、我们同样都是女人的立场。我只是想帮助你，我想你也很了解。德伟不是一个很有自信的人，他对很多事情都没有把握，患得患失，而且也有逃避问题的习惯。也许会有人说，我利用了德伟，可是在这段日子里头。
，我帮了他不少的忙，也帮他解决了不少问题。也许就是因为这样，他反而觉得更不能少了我。我想你生长的环境一定很安适，很浪漫。我生长的环境却告诉我，这世界上没有爱。But I learned a different lesson watching my parents bleed out in that alley. I wouldn't exactly say that Jale uh, Jelly's childhood is storybook, but she has been, I guess, shielded from uh, a number of harsh realities that I'm sure others are, are used to. Got to say for yourself, bud. And he's given her like a smaller bouquet than she gave to her father. Maybe. Maybe. In what way? In terms of. Yeah. 女人有女人的范围，想在一起的时候，好像只有礼拜天。Is Taiwan on a six-day work week during this time? I don't know how imperative it is to highlight, but this is in a time of obviously of Taiwan's like economic development, part of its timeline and becoming one of the four four tigers. 我怎么可以对另外一个生命说，只要你来，我就可以给你幸福。这是不负责任的，你说对不对 ？Yeah, and I, I guess in a lot of movies, obviously, are about happiness and unhappiness. But specifically in the context of this movie, the happiness that was discussed between Chali and her brother is has now passed down into the、uh, the strained relationship that she has with Dewey. 我觉得这些年来就像一场梦，结婚。是昨天睡觉前的事。梦。I I was just watching another movie that kind of highlighted this specific idea that you're sleepwalking or dreaming through your life. Um, specifically, uh, the last movie I just watched, uh, Chunking Express, talks about the idea of daydreaming, of um, sleepwalking through your life. But also, I watched Tokyo Sonata, in which the wife kind of says that she had woken from a dream, where or she she wonders if the last few years have been a dream that she'll maybe someday wake up from. This kind of these very different movies across very different decades,、um, but this fear expressed by by these three women. Of sleepwalking through their lives. Dewey, 打开静默影后。Jelly, 来。Jesus, another time. 
Another time jump. She has a really intense relationship with her family, especially with her parents. Just the way that they don't, like, talk to each other very much. And try and leave things unsaid. I love these time these time jumps, these time lapses. It's so beautifully expressed. The this kind of meandering approach this movie ta takes to storytelling that it's it's like it's like Proustian. There is no like central event in a life. All all of these events kind of bleed and tie into each other and are linked through memory. Was Beethoven mentioned earlier in this movie? I also just watched another movie that was uh, tangentially related to Beethoven. Yeah, you see the Proustian element? Uh, her mother taking in the tea and then flashing back to a memory of her father drinking tea from a very similar cup. I, I love this section, Jesus. It's haunting. I, yeah, I, I really love in terms of this film's kind of aims or conceits that it's taken away so much in terms of uh, plot or um, like escalating conflict that it allows the space to run the gamut from like these really um, realistically drawn out human stories that are being told to these very kind of expressive memory dream plays that go on. dad having an affair or her dad having an affair so this may be moments where her uh, a wedge was drawn between her and her father and this might be where moments of that kind of distrust began yeah and using the glasses to signify that this is her dad who <sighs> and also kind of um, another kind of thematic through line or is that um, her that Douay is discovered or her his belongings are discovered with the pills from the psychiatrist it, I don't know if it's a direct reference or not but the kind of suggestion that this um, this kind of trauma in her life is inherited from her relationship with her father down to her relationship with Douay even though she marries Douay as a means to escape the kind of um, strictness or um, or pain that she feels within her own family. I really love the nonverbal sections of this movie. They're firing the nurse because she seduced her husband. Yeah. And the mom was aware that that uh, Jali was running away, but she let her go. That's a beautiful little revelation.
伊就是一个囡仔，落嘛我咧甲照顾，我惊啥？Love this moments of mutual understanding between this mother and this daughter. In the end, they relate to each other as women before they relate to each other as mother and daughter. That they've both had these trouble with these men in their lives. Do I still love you? Maybe before I was busy, before I was not at home. But I have a kind of 说不出来的感觉。他现在好像已经转变了。前几天，他还带我去郊游。I've been kind of holding off on saying this, but this actress is beautiful. Um, Sylvia Chang. Hundred and nine movie credits or movie and television credits. Ah. Look how like, and in terms of like the close-ups and stuff and just the framing, when she's at um her friend's house, just how much they like fill up the frame, make it feel uh, cozy and um, warm in comparison to um, at her at um Jali's home or apartment. 我想我是习惯了，结果应该不会太差吧。这么多年来，我们总算又有了新的开始，新的希望。Added to list of current directors: Yang Almodovar, Campion. No, not Campion. Uh. Ramsey, uh, Kurosawa, yes, Campion, Campion, and Bright Star. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. She looks like she's about to receive a phone call. Yeah, it's that morning. God damn it! Oh damn it! It's that morning she gets the phone call that her husband's dead. Oh. Do you think you have a little bit of information to give us a chance to get out of here? Let's go, let's go. Let's go and get out of here. Oh, my God. No. He's not so bad. How do we find out? This is a soft kind of... Idea that's developed is her being unable to identify her husband literally in terms of the body that's um, they're searching for, but also being unable to identify him in terms of his um, motives or feelings or his emotions towards her towards the end of their relationship. What are they doing now? I checked the insurance company. 得为个人向公司负责的五千万。现在不知道在哪。An embezzlement scheme, nice。而且，我也同时听说，他最近张罗了一大堆现款，要查明真相，还需要几天的时间。我，我对这种事情，是比。It's not going well. Not going well at all. 家里说。是一个心理医生开给他的药，警察也就是因为这个，才找到家里的。也许这个药瓶，根本就是德伟上个礼拜掉在海边的。我还。Curiouser and curiouser. It was just some rando who died on that beach, and he just happened to have um, Duwe's bottle near him. This is why you don't litter. 
我可不愿再被牵连进去。一个好朋友。Why you gotta be like that? 可能发生这么大的事。I mean, I guess she's not involved anymore. But she was with him at the beach. 说你不愿被牵连。我们公司里没有这么多事，多到德伟要去看医生。So work hasn't been that bad. Ah, I'm going nuts though, trying to figure out this dude's life. You and him in the outside doing some other stuff. This is like its own little uh, what's that Korean movie? That's his business. Peppermint candy. It's like just a lot of threads to unravel. Help. 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 现在你屌开了是不是？你罩得住了是不是？你用不着跟我大吼小叫的，小弟弟。你老哥哥在混的时候，你还在地上爬。去、啊，去跟你妈咪抱抱。<笑>也许我们开始的太顺了。前几年钱也好赚，给德伟一个错觉，认为赚钱就是这么容易。这也许是我的错。我开车来的时候，一直在想。有两种想法：第一，这就是他；第二，这根本就不是那么回事儿。你是认为他不会再回来了？你这样想，每一种情况的后果，其实对你来讲。没有什么很大的分别。I guess that's fair. 对不对？世间的力量是那么的伟大，也是那么的可怕。爸爸去世。医院的跟着被淘汰。谁是一个盲哥？我也随着医院被世界所遗忘了。记得你离家出走那天的晚上，我们就像现在一样，静静的谈了很久。We talked about happiness, yeah. Done a great job with his makeup too. 听说。你跟德伟最近处的并不太融洽，是吗？假如我知道以后我们会变成这个样子，那天晚上我就不会那么天真的跑去找你谈。我想，我已经知道应该怎么去改进我跟德伟关系的方法。我想，我应该给他完全的信任。你相信德威吗？也许，我这一生当中所学到最好的教训。就是这个，我这辈子一切都靠自己，可是我却盲目的去相信那个人。When did he blindly follow someone else? When he followed his father's rule? 不要太盲目的去相信任何一个人。家里， yeah. 当初我就是太信任了爸爸。你看我现在， can't even straighten my tie. 随着这一切，都被时间所遗忘了
whatever the outcome is, her life isn't changed. So that was three years ago. He's doing fine. Shouldn't be smoking. Oh man, the passage of time in this movie. He only thought of you. Yangguangba. Some Nungyo 不是吗？重要的是，这个小女孩已经长大成为一个完美的妇人了。我相信她的成长，也全是从海滩的那一天事情发生以后开始的吧。Jesus, oh dear, oh me, oh my. I, I... It actually kind of drummed up a lot of movies that I watched just recently, like just before this movie, like in, in terms of the kind of um, neoliberal rot that was occurring, the kind of bourgeois, bourgeois rot that was occurring, uh, I definitely related that to Tokyo Sonata, although that one was kind of about a recession. But um, yeah, the the kind of democratic uh, displacement or exchange of protagonists of central characters definitely reminded me a lot of uh, the Girl and the Spider, as well as Chungking Express, which I also just watched recently. Uh, yeah, a beautifully rendered kind of movie about. Uh, memory about longevity and persistence about regret certainly about regret enormous enormous regret that we feel as adults where it feels like there's this long list of decisions we didn't even realize we were making to arrive at a point where 
everything seems so out of whack and everything seems so beyond our control. But on top of that regret, also persistence, a willingness to accept that regret and accept things out of our control and continue on. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, in terms of the fluidity of the script, of the of the storytelling, just the way it weaves in and out of different points in time and different memories, I thought was just so fascinating. It was something that was like uh, just slightly frustrating when it first poked its head up, when it first reared its head, and as the film continued and it persisted with this kind of meandering stream of consciousness kind of breaks into and lapses in time you really kind of fell into that cadence and it presented a beautifully uh non-committal interweaving of time and space and for for my personal for my personal inclinations just a a beautiful portrait of taiwan um, just images I don't rarely uh, images I rarely get to see depicted on screen. Uh, I, how old was Edward Edward Yang when he made this? This kind of seems like a very adult kind of story, but that's also one of those things that like thirty year olds kind of tell, or thirty thirty six about thirty six years. So he would have been about thirty six when he was shooting this movie. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> that was that day on the beach. I'm gonna think about it a little bit more. Uh, if you get the opportunity, you should watch it. I think it's a, a very lived-in story. I don't really know how to describe it more than that, but it definitely put me in the headspace of thinking about, you know, things that my parents were growing up with, hopes and dreams that they had that perhaps were left unfulfilled. It's really interesting. I'm interested to check out Taipei's story next, and, you know, possibly Brighter Summer Day and Yi moving down the line. <sighs> have you seen any Edward Yang films? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know if you have any recommendations. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. And join my Patreon if you'd like. I've got more videos there of even more old and obscure and art house films. And until next time, keep watching good movies.